Hello, Malcolm here, and welcome to the Sunday Sample for Corporate Worship Matters. And today we're having another look at the issue of posture, posture in corporate worship. And this is inspired by a chapter in this book, Participating in Worship, by Craig Douglas Erickson. And we're on to our 10th issue today. And we're looking at the particular topic of laying on of hands. The laying on of hands is what we're going to look at here today. What is the usefulness and relevance of this movement, this posture in corporate worship? Now, the most common example of laying on of hands, at least in my fellowships, where, where I am, is for something like the commissioning of elders. I've participated in this myself, where we've had a group of, of elders appointed and has been a praying over them and a laying on of hands as a, a commissioning for them, which I, I think was fantastic and uh, very memorable and very moving and reverent as well. But do we restrict this laying on of hands too much? Perhaps we're missing out on some aspects of corporate worship where the laying on of hands could be uh, something that helps, helps our connection with God and, and our understanding of God's power and, uh, at work in us. So let's think about this. Biblically, biblically the significance of hands. What have I got? Seven. Okay, seven here we go. Number one, hands are very expressive. Psalm 46, no, Psalm 47, Psalm 98, and Isaiah 55. Hands are meant to be pure. Exodus 30, Psalm 24, James chapter 4, verse 8, Matthew 15, verses 2 and 20, chapter 27, verse 24. I'll put all these in the show notes. Mark chapter 7, verses 2 and 5. Hands are involved with sacrifice, laying on of hands, right? Exodus 29, verses 10 to 25. Hands are laid on people to confer power and authority. In Deuteronomy 34, and Acts 6, Acts 8, Acts 19, 1 Timothy 4, and uh, 2 Timothy chapter 1. Jesus himself laid his hands on children, Matthew 19. And also, of course, on people who needed healing, Mark 6 and 8 and 16, Luke chapter 4. The apostles laid hands on people as well, following on from the example of Jesus in Acts 28. And the early church laid hands on missionaries in Acts chapter 13 sending them out, commissioning them. So is there a place for the laying on of hands normally in our church, or as a normative act in our church service? It's not something reserved for only very special occasions, although perhaps there's that too, but part of our normal worship. How do our hands play a part in our corporate worship? Something perhaps we don't think about um, enough. I have some suggestions as to how we could use hands. Uh, what have I got? Nine of them. Nine of them. And this is just a few things that came to my mind as I was writing a list. You could probably think of more, and I'd like you to give me some more. So let's go through my list first. Firstly, uh, sending out a mission team, laying hands on the group of people, going out, planting a new church, planting a new family group, planting a new house group, whatever it is, uh, sending them out, laying on the hands there. Secondly, Commissioning someone for special a special work of service, so they're joining in the uh, the teaching of the children's ministry, uh, the children's ministry, or uh, the teaching the children, uh, becoming a deacon, an elder, taking up any kind of leadership role. Uh, perhaps someone involved in corporate worship leadership. The next time we have a new s a leader of singing, a new instrumentalist, perhaps we should lay hands on them. What about thirdly, praying over someone with a significant illness? And I've been part of that. It's very special. Fourthly, uh, someone leaving the congregation, moving to another city, another country, another church, um, as they leave, perhaps laying hands on them. Maybe that's an idea. Fifthly, helping people with times of crisis in their lives, which we all have from time to time. Sixthly, um, restoring people to the faith and or, and or the fellowship, laying hands on them. Uh, seventhly, praying over people are bound to be baptized with hands laid on them. Eighthly, welcoming a new baby into the congregation, laying hands on them. Number nine, Praying over a couple are bound to be married or having just arrived back from honeymoon and praying God's blessing on them by laying hands on them and perhaps praying for them. What do you think about these ideas? Perhaps you can think of others and I'd love to know. So please leave a comment anywhere you are here or see this recording, leave them publicly so that we can learn from each other uh, because we learn best and we learn in community. If you can know, think of anybody who might benefit from these recordings, please pass the link on, hit the subscribe button, the like button, leave a review, and I hope the next time you gather with all of your friends to worship our great God, your experience will be that of Psalm 100 verse 2. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before Him with joyful songs, and maybe lay hands. Take care, and God bless you.